joining me now to discuss is Edward Dabrowski, a retired ATF special agent in charge, and he researches now gun violence at Case Western Reserve University. Thank you, Edward, very much for joining us. Good morning. How useful do you think uh, the Department of Justice getting involved here will be? I, I think that's incredibly critical at this stage. Um, as your reporters noted, the source of this review has to be somebody credible, objective, transparent, and accurate. And right. I can't think of a better spot than the cops office at DOJ to do that. Can they do anything outside of, as Paula said, they can make some referrals if there is going to be criminal prosecution, we'll see. But can they do anything forward looking? Because the reality is the lessons were known here since Columbine. We knew go toward the shots, the sound of the gunfire, and go right away and go fast. And, and that's going to be one of the critical questions that, that needs to be answered, and that's why they're a great resource for that. They've got vast experience with state and local law enforcement. They can call on the experience of anybody else within DOJ, whether that's FBI, ATF, um, any, any U.S. attorneys or any other legal, mm -hmm. um, legal sources. And, and ultimately, you're right. It, it, it's going to, going to be what happened in those minutes that, uh, that had this misjudgment occur that they believed it was a barricade and not still an active shooter scenario. It, it's it, it's yeah. tr extremely troubling. When you look at the Texas Commission on Law Enforcement training manual on how to handle active shooter situations, it clearly states a, quote, officer's first priority is to move in and confront the attacker. And then it goes on to say, a first responder unwilling to place the lives of the innocent above their own safety should consider another career. Uh, all law enforcement in Texas are trained under these exact guidelines that could not be more clear. How can you square that with what we saw happen? I, or ca you can't. I, I can't. And, and also in those guidelines, it talks about they give an example that if they if an officer forces an attacker into a room or area where they are isolated, cannot escape, and can do no more harm to right. staff or visitors, the officer is not obligated. I don't see that any of those criteria are met. And one of the challenges with any critical incident or dynamic tactical situation is you have to make the right call based on the information you have mm -hmm. and the resources you have and not the information and resources you want. And the training and the expertise and experience are what's supposed to inform that correct pathway to the right decision. Yeah. You have spent 30 years, right, three decades plus, focused on firearm-related violent crimes. And a lot of your work is toward focusing on opportunities for more research, including focusing on gun violence as a public health issue, really a, a, an epidemic in this country. And you've emphasized the need to study it and address it that way as a systemic issue. Now, there's debate over that, but most of the medical professionals agree with you on that front. Why do you think that that would change things? It, it, it's You've got to apply cross-disciplinary and, and reach out to other um, expertises to, to look at this through different lenses. And the public health approach to this Look, I spent a lot of years going into neighborhoods repeatedly conducting investigations and making arrests. And, you know, you see the same victims, you see the same suspects, you see communities that are constantly impacted by this. And, you know, I can tell you from my experience in Cleveland, you know, we had the you know, emergency department doctors working with us to try and intervene with, you know, younger and younger kids as they were seeing them come into their emergency departments. Mm -hmm. um, you, you have to, it's an all sources all resource issue. You just, you just can't say this one thing is going to fix it. And as you've noted, the victims and perpetrators younger and younger and younger. Uh, Edward Dipkowski, thank you very much.